In this video, we will be revisiting MinUI on the RG35XXSP, adding new game consoles for emulation, and adding new tricks like dual booting with the stock operating system. Let's get started. Hello everyone. Today for lunch we have some leftovers and some leftover business. Let's revisit MinUI on the SP and get it to play Sega CD, 32X, and Neo Geo CD with the standard base and extras pack provided by MinUI. So back here on the PC, we're going to take the original strategy that we had of renaming the original BIOS folder to BIOS 2, ROMs folder to ROMs 2. If you go into the BIOS section and select the Mega Drive folder, you have to do is add the BIOS files that already exist for Sega CD. And then for PC Engine, the SysCard 3. Once you copy over the BIOS files, you should have some ROMs that originally came with the SD card. So if you come in here to Sega 32X, you can select these, Sega CD, and PC Engine. Just take these files and copy them over to ROMs in the appropriate directories. We put both Sega CD and 32X games into the MD Mega Drive folder, and these will play out of the Sega Genesis menu option on the device. This may seem a little bit weird, but it does allow us to do without any extra configuration. Let's start with Sonic CD. Now let's check out Afterburner for the 32X. Note that 32X itself does not require any extra BIOS files. The last system that we're going to show off is PC Engine CD using Castlevania Rondo of Blood. To get a little bit more out of MinUI, we can install extra extension packs that will enable the emulators built into the stock operating system. We'll end up adding systems for Dreamcast, Nintendo DS, Game Boy Advance with the MGBA emulator, Nintendo 64, Neo Geo with Final Burn Alpha, which gives access to most arcade games, Pico 8 native, um, PSP through RetroArch, PSP through PPSSPP, and a Category 4 vertical, vertical Arcade. To get the pack, just select the Releases, Download, and then I'm going to copy the files over. To the root of the SD card. Next, let's take a look at some of the new systems that we have. So for example, Dreamcast. Let's go into the Dreamcast files that already came with the system. Cut, so we're not making filling up extra space. And paste. At that point, you can delete the README file, which is just there to make sure that the folder itself doesn't get removed from being empty. And we'll do this again for the remainder of the systems. Now with that, let's exit, plug this back into the Ambernic and see what we get. Let's start with by looking at Nintendo DS using Drastic. Note that this is a bit of a compromised experience due to the lack of a touchscreen, so you'll have to tap the power button to get into stylus mode and tap it again to get into regular D-pad mode. 
You will also need to press the L1 button to swap between the different screens and press the R2 button to go into full screen mode. Next, let's take a look at PSP using PPSSPP standalone. Note that by default, this will go to a full screen and stretched image. Note that this can be fixed by going into the menu, selecting display and layout effects, going all the way to the bottom where it says resize and keep moving to the right so that you can uncheck the box for a stretch. The performance of PSP is almost the same as stock, and so you will have to stick to smaller, lightweight, or 2D titles. Next, let's take a look at arcade games using Final Burn Neo. This can play more than just Neo Geo games, as the core is compatible with other arcade titles. Now let's take a look at Dreamcast on the SP. The performance should be the exact same as stock, so you will have to stick with lighter weight titles. Note that the audio for this game is dimmed on purpose to avoid playing a licensed song. One other note before we wrap up is that Nintendo 64 was attempted using the core, but had issues mapping the analog stick to the D-pad, so at this point I just do not recommend it. Next, let's show off a few more cool tricks of this pack. By default, MinUI is organized by game system, but for people who prefer to have their games organized by franchise or genre, there is an option to go to what's called a collections view. This is supported in MinUI base pack without this add-on, but this add-on includes examples of a franchise view as well as tools and scripts to switch back and forth from this view from within the device. Note that the example provided may have different names for games, and so you will have to edit the files to match what is on your device. If you want to go back to the default view, just go back to Tools and then select Switch to Consoles. You will find the collections in a folder called Collections. Each text file represents a different menu entry. From here, you can select the file and edit the names so that they match what is on your device. Lastly, let's take a look at the coolest feature of this pack, which is the ability to go back and forth with stock firmware. I still recommend MinUI, but for some people, the purposeful limitations may cause them to feel like they're missing something. With this addition, you can always return back to stock and get Wi-Fi features, and then dual boot back to MinUI for its clean aesthetics with absolutely no risk. When you're back in stock firmware, if you want to return to MinUI, just select the App Center, and then Apps, and then select the Reboot to MinUI script. Note that between stock and MinUI, the folders for where you keep your ROMs are different, so if you reboot back into stock and realize that your games are not showing up, it's because they may have been moved to the MinUI folders. Thank you for joining me today to explore this pack. Remember to stay retro, stay gaming, and stay awesome.